So I'm just getting ready to head out for the day and I'm going to a National Trust property called Tintersfield. At least that's how I think it's pronounced. You know when you've only ever seen something written down and you've never heard anybody say it out loud? Not quite sure if you're saying it right. So it's a cold but sunny day in February today. So I'm hoping that getting out in the fresh air and the beautiful surroundings will help get me out of the slump that I've been in for the last few months. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I've been spending a lot of time doing bobbin lace making, but I've not really done any sketching since October. So I'm hoping that this day out today will help me get back into doing some sketching and I've got my art bag ready to go. But you know what happened last time when I started recording a video before sketching? I got completely lost and I ended up not doing any sketching at all. And I've realised, not planned, complete coincidence, I'm actually wearing the same t-shirt today which has got a, a fake quote from Christopher Columbus about being confused, not lost. <laughs> So hopefully we don't have a repeat performance of that today and uh, there'll be something else to show you after this introduction. Hey, guess what? I got lost. <laughs> I thought I don't need my sat nav. It's on main roads. I know it's signposted from the main road. Anyway, I'm, I'm following along. I've been driving for about an hour and uh, road closed. <laughs> but I, I missed the diversion. So I'm currently uh, parked in a in a church hall car park and I'm just about to put Google Maps on and hopefully it will update with the, the road closure and I will be able to find an alternative route to Tinsfield. <laughs> oh, I joked about getting lost but I was so confident I wasn't going to get lost. There you go, that's what happens when you think you know where you're going. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. So I finally arrived. It's taken me about an hour and a half to arrive and actually get parked. Um, but the last quarter of an hour, I've basically just been sat in a queue waiting to get into the car park. It's so busy here today. And I'm thinking, yeah, I know it's a sunny day, but it's February. It's a Monday. Like, why is it so busy? Of course, I didn't realise it's half term. All the kids are off school. So, yeah, it's really busy here today. So the first place you come to on the site is this row of old farm buildings which is now where they've got the toilets and the shops and the main cafe which is actually in the old cow barn and then from here it's about a 15 minute walk to the main house. Believe it or not this is actually the back of the house and then there's this really cute little building. I knew straight away that I wanted to draw this, but I decided I'd have more of a wander around first before coming back to do the sketch. And I love that little curvy wall too. And here's another view of it from the other angle and a few of the details with the lovely roof tiles and also the different coloured tiles clad in the side walls as well. So from there I moved on to have a look around the outside of the house and this is the view sort of from the side looking across some of the grounds and um, yeah it's just such a massive estate and then as we come around the corner here there's my little building in the background <laughs> and the back of the house and then along the, the side which is so impressive I mean how that's not the front of the building I don't know. This little round turret is my favourite feature on this side of the building. And later in the day, I did actually sit down with the intention of sketching it. But um, it was a little bit too overwhelming and I gave up before I even started. Here's the front and the main entrance. I didn't go inside for a tour today. And then the house has got its own chapel attached as well. I really like this quirky little tower too. <laughs> And then looking through the archway, which is sort of between the house and the chapel. From there, I took a walk down to the area which had the kitchen gardens. And this time of year, there wasn't a huge amount to see. Um, I didn't bother taking photos of the cabbage and the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but then there was this beautiful orangery building, which actually had oranges growing inside. 
sometimes when you go to these places they've still got the orangery building but it's not necessarily actually still used um, so that was really nice to see and this was the building that I decided I would sit and draw unfortunately the only place I could sit was quite a long way back from the building so I couldn't see all the beautiful details from where I was sat it wasn't practical for me to film the process of doing this little sketch so I decided to just take a photo every few minutes so you can see the progress obviously starting with the pencil sketch first and then adding in the details with pen it was about this point when I started adding the watercolour that a family came and sat alongside me and their little boy was really intrigued to see what I was doing and it was lovely because there was no embarrassment you know kids just say what they think don't they and he was just asking me questions about what I was doing and why I was doing it and how I was going to clean up <laughs> it was really sweet and whenever I'm drawing on location I try and remember to take a photo with my sketch showing the background as well because it's, it's kind of proof that I actually did it there and not just from a photo. After I finished my sketch, I bought myself a nice hot cheese and onion pasty in the little cafe that was behind the orangery. And then I took a slow walk back up towards the house. And we'll just pretend that I had the restraint to take a photo of the pasty before I started eating it. <laughs> And then we get to this point where we've got some nice big steps up to this grand impressive side of the house again. And we're back at my favourite spot ready to start sketching. It's quite often the way when I visit these grand houses with huge estates. I'm always drawn to the small little buildings whether it's a summer house or a dovecot or you know like the orangery although the orangery was quite grand but not in comparison to the main house. And I did actually ask a member of staff about this little building in particular, and apparently it was originally an aviary. So at this point I decided to stop because I was pretty cold and also uncomfortable because the bench that I was sat on was actually facing away from the aviary. So I was twisted really awkwardly to get a good view. And then again, I took a photo of my sketch with the Avery behind. Although it's not finished, it gives a record of how far I got on location. So then the last thing I did before driving back home was I stopped off back at the cow barn and I had a nice pot of tea and a lovely chocolate brownie. OK, so I've just got home and uh, pretty tired. It's been quite a long day, actually, or... I'd been out for about seven hours, sort of roughly three hours driving, roughly four hours sort of walking around and sketching. Um, so as you will have seen, I did these two. This one more or less finished. This one needs some, some colour adding. I may or may not do this this evening. Um, I've got some other jobs that need to be done including feeding my cat as a priority. He's just wandering around, <laughs> keeps coming in and looking at me. Why are you not feeding me? <laughs> I did initially think that I would do a double page spread. So I've kind of done like a, a penciled outline of like a title to go across the two pages. But after I finish this one off, I'll make a decision whether I want to do some extra sketches based on photos or whether I just want to keep it as the one page and just do the main title across the middle on this one. But I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. Right, OK, I best go and feed my cat and get these other few jobs done before I uh, put my feet up. <laughs> so I decided to do the same again with taking the photos at different stages as I'm adding the various layers of colour on the Avery sketch. When I did the coloured tiles, I started off with the terracotta colour and then I dropped in little spots of dark, but it looked too dark. So I actually blotted that back so it's a little bit more subtle. 
And then to finish it off, I used the fine liner to redefine some of the details and then just used uh, the white gel pen just to add those kind of uh, stereotypical <laughs> window stripes to let you know that it's glass. <laughs> so here it is, the finished page. And as you can see, I decided to just use one page, not both. And that just seemed fair because these are the two buildings which really stood out to me on the day. And I could fill that other page from sketches from photos. But as a, a memory of the day, this feels more appropriate. And I am planning to go back to Tintersfield again in the future and have a look around the inside the house and uh, see a bit more of the grounds. So maybe another time I'll, I'll draw the house itself or parts of it. <laughs> I did actually add a few more details to the orangery. I just put a little bit more blue in the sky. And although in reality there was actually trees poking up behind, because it was such a blue sky on the day, I just felt like I just wanted to have some blue on here and not just green background. And I added a bit extra uh, different colour green in the, the flower beds in front. And I just went back over some of the details with pen as well and um, added in some some texture for the, for the red brickwork. And then obviously you've just seen my finished Avery. Um, but what I didn't tell you was the mistakes that I noticed. <laughs> this end wall here, where I've got this whole section is, is the tiles. Actually, only half of it was tiled. And then the other part was glass. And also on the subject of glass, these little tiny glass panels um, I've got it four wide, which is correct, but it should only be four high as well. And it was kind of when I realised that I'd made this dimension too tall. The building was actually shorter than I've drawn it. So, um, so yeah, the, the proportions were wrong. So I just I just added in some extra glass panels to make to make it work. So both in the fact that I didn't get all the details on the orangery and I got some of the details wrong on the Avery. Neither of them are particularly accurate, but they are my memory from the day, and especially as I did most of it while I was there. So yeah, so I'm really quite pleased with that page. And in terms of the supplies I used, um, my little DIY paint tin, I think I used I worked it out. I think I used about 10 of the 15 colours and um, the brushes I used was the size 2 and the size 4. And then my fine liners 01, 03 and 05, the white jelly roll pen and the mechanical pencil. So those are the bits which I used from my sketch kit and um, I'll add a link to my, my full sketch kit if you're interested in seeing more detail of what I carry with me. And I'll also put a link in the description for Tintersfield itself if you're interested in more information about the house. So thanks for coming along with me on my day out and for sharing with my little sketches. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. <laughs>